I normally just hate to get into this topic. It just seems to be a powder keg, but what the heck. Hello everybody, welcome back to the cabin. Welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. This is video two in a three video series, which really they're not connected, but I'm filming them all in the same day. We had over $2,200 in sales across four different platforms. And I'm shutting this store down for what I thought was a week, but I think I'm gonna extend it further than that and taking a little bit of time off. I love to take a little time off this time of year. I've never taken this many days. Makes me a little nervous. This was from the last video that I just got done filming, put on this shirt from New England Betty Boop, and I said, we're gonna film another one. And then we got one more to go after this because sales were so good leading up to Christmas. This is obviously filmed a few days before you're going to see it, but I got a message from somebody and it's normally a topic I do not like to discuss very much at all unless it's just sharing my own experience. But I decided that I was going to tackle this one. I think it's a good time of year to tackle it heading into the new year when people start to make resolutions and think about things in a different way and what could be possible. It's about quitting your job. And like I said, I, I try to stay away from this topic because boy, it is so particular to individual people that it's hard to give advice, but I want people to hear this message that I got in an email the other day, and I'm gonna read through it and talk about some boxes that I think, at least for me, needed to be checked before I ever did anything like quit my job and become a, a reseller. And in my case, it was much more than just that. But of course, I've got a bunch of sales to go through, so I'm gonna weave the topic between every sale. This one, some of you may remember me picking this up. I've got, I think I cut this thing for $5, and I got it at a sale just down the road, and we didn't list it forever. And then we did list it, and it took forever to sell, but you know, there's one little spot there. I mean, I bought this thing two years ago. I don't think it's been listed very long, but it's a men's XL nutmeg made in Korea. And it's just a sweet one right there. Absolutely love this one. I think I had it out there for, I don't know, maybe 150. I can't quite remember what I had it out there for. There's the back kit. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Got an offer for $120 and I jumped on it. $5 into $120 plus shipping. So I'm gonna read the message first and then talk about a few of these things that if I were in this person's position, what I would do. They gave me enough specifics here that I think I could actually comment on this. A lot of people, you know, if you say, should I quit my job and become a full-time reseller? It's like, I don't know, should you? <laughs> but this person gave a bunch. So all you folks out there who are considering this, what go through what goes through your minds? All of you people out there who have done this, what goes through your mind or what went through your mind? Let me read this. Hey, Kevin, I think I'm about to come to an impasse with my full-time job. I know that resonates with a lot of people. I've been with the same company 14 years. On the outside looking in, it's a great job, great money, benefits. I took a position back at the first of the year and it has slowly been taking me away from my family. I have only been home two days in the past two weeks. I'm currently typing this message while sitting in Kalamazoo, Michigan and he lives in Tennessee. He goes on to say that he is, he's only been reselling, he started part-time in 2022, but he saw enough in it that he was already contemplating doing it before he was offered this job. So old welcome back, Kata. Gotta love the sweat hogs right there. And I mentioned on a Commonwealth Picker video on the other channel that I used to play this. I used to have every Monday we'd have a quiz. Every single Monday when I got back to school and I'd give them like five minutes to get ready for their quiz. It wasn't anything ridiculously hard or anything, but it was a way to get back into the week. And I would play this song lightly in the background, Welcome Back. And when the song was over, they knew they had 30 seconds to get their stuff ready for their quiz. <laughs> what did they sell for? $31 plus shipping. I totally take that back. $21 plus shipping. Hi, Kevin. You're my kind of teacher. Welcome back on Monday. So fun. Me and my partner are going to watch this together, even though he's not a Travolta fan. This brings back memories of our teenage years. We'll enjoy watching the show together. Was hoping you'd buy them at the sale on the Picker channel. I did. I ended up buying them. They gave me a deal. Almost 50% off. Blessed holiday to you, your family, and all the viewers. My eBay store is Angels 
Vintage Treasures, Marianne. Thank you very much. So he says that when he was offered the job, he felt like he was punched in the gut. That's not normally how somebody feels when they're offered a full-time job. So it seems like you were really kind of all in on this, or at least feeling like this is where you're supposed to be going. And he says, I felt like God was opening the doors for this to be a family business and allow us to make more time for what is important. Then I was offered the job, and like I said, I was a punch in the gut. So that's an interesting way. Now, he does say something else here really quickly that I want to mention before I pick the next item. It eventually became a nightmare. He goes into the job about, you know, his nightmare. It eventually became a nightmare, and I just do not enjoy it. My wife is definitely on board with this potential life-changing decision giving up security to focus on reselling and family as many of you know ashtrays and tupperware are my kryptonite although i don't feel guilty after i buy tupperware but i often feel guilty after i buy ashtrays like i probably shouldn't have done that. but this one was a cool set that i had never seen before i don't want to unwrap it so i'll show it to you and it was an a cigarette holder they're just clear glass they have that gold accent and it was a cigarette holder with three matching ashtrays. And I don't remember what I had it listed for, but I took an offer. I think I did anyways. Or maybe they just bought it. I can't even remember. You're probably seeing it on the screen. For $17 plus shipping, I more than likely paid a dollar or two for those. And I guess it's profit and it's an ashtray, so I like it. But as the years go by, I'm more and more kind of choosy, more and more picky with those. I guess I can give his name. It's Lucas. Gives him an identity here. He says that uh, we have done good this year, just doing it part-time, and I feel I can devote more time during the good sourcing months, and I can definitely see growth. Very few people know our plans. Not anymore, Lucas. <laughs> Most people I work with, by the way, I sent him a message, said I was going to talk about this. Most people I work with have no clue that I have even been building an eBay business at all. I know it won't be easy and will require a huge step of faith, but our quality family time is worth it. What couple of family members do know of our plans, definitely not getting encouraging support from them. <laughs> I've been told I will never make as much money as I do at my current job, and I don't have those numbers, and I certainly didn't ask. I have been told that the only way to make good money is to travel. I guess I'm assuming that's in your job, not as a reseller. I've been told that I shouldn't do this because I have good benefits. Honestly, we have a high deductible insurance plan and haven't even met our deductible this year. Any doctor visits have been paid straight out of our pocket. We don't need to make what I make. The eBay isn't built up enough to be a lateral move, but I just haven't had the time to do all this travel. So I'm happy I sold those ashtrays, but... I love even more selling like vintage 80s stuff. And this is the new bin I created for some of the Motu figures we've got. I like to put them on the shelves over there. But, boy, nothing sold out of that bin in forever. I need to do something to get that stuff out of here. Let me pull this Motu bin over here and we'll open it up and take a look at it. I'm going to break my ashtrays. Looking for man-at-arms. There he is right there. I see it. And there's no weapon with this guy right here, unfortunately. But he did sell. And we're into him for less than a dollar, probably around 60 or 70 cents for this guy. And it's an 81 figure. Got to get his legs all straight. And he sold for $15 plus shipping. And it went to Robert. He says, hey, Kevin, my wife and I love your YouTube channel. This was the first Masters of the Universe figured, uh, figure I had when I was a kid. If you could throw in a sticker, I would love it to add to my bulletin board along with ones from Shed Flips, Part-Time Pickers, Harry Tornado. Thanks so much. So absolutely, we'll definitely do that. We actually throw in the little stickers on every single sale. So I'll throw in a couple extras on those. And the other ones, the bigger die cut ones, we actually sell over on Commonwealth Picker. Well, Reagan sells on CommonwealthPicker.com. Those are the ones that we sell over there. They do get a little pricey. I do give away those Commonwealth flipper stickers, though, when I'm out and I meet people on the trail. So, they're, I don't know what I pay for them. They're not too much, I guess. But they're pretty durable. They're pretty good quality. I like to have those good stickers. I stick a bunch of stickers on my mailbox out there. And I know the good stickers because they're the ones that last through the weather and the sun. 
and mine have lasted longer than anybody's. All right, so Lucas gives us some numbers here. He doesn't give us how much he's making, and he doesn't say how much he needs to make, although he did say how much he's making is more than they need to make. So I think that's interesting. But he does say this, just part-time, we have done about 40,000 gross part-time. Net profit is around the 60% mark, so I'm no genius here, but uh, let me see here. Four, it's 24,000 net profit a year-ish. I just need the time to source more to grow the sales. I have a good bit that needs listing, just need time to list it. If the American dream is so great, why does it feel like we're in bondage? <laughs> why do something that takes you away from your family and robs joy just for a paycheck and benefits? Sorry for the long message, just felt like I needed to vent. And you might be somebody that understands. Thanks for the information and the content. May God bless you and your family. So there's the message. And now I'm going to comment on that, but I'm going to be specific about some other things as well and talk about the thought process for me because it's very, very different than most people out there. But are you sure you want to do this? Look at this. Are you sure you want to have animals begging to get in, begging for treats, begging all the time? When I was a teacher, I had kids in my classroom constantly. I needed something. Whether it was help with something or just somebody to talk to, there was always something and somebody that needed attended to. Kind of the same around here. So a Minnesota Vikings jersey. This one's new, Harvin. And that one sold for $45. Plus shipping. All right, I'm going to start going through these boxes that I would check, and y'all can tell me where I'm wrong down below. I'm not saying I'm an expert on this by any stretch. I'm just saying with my experience and the thought process that went through my head, even though the circumstances were quite a bit different, I think at least for some people, I can maybe provide a little bit of insight into this. And since there's so much detail in this, I'm going to give it a shot, which I really never do. But I think it's an interesting topic and, and quite an email. So it sounds to me like on a scale of one to 10, not liking your job is really, really high. You, you don't like your job. And I always loved my job, but it got tougher and tougher as the years got, you know, as they just kept going by. And it's like, whew, I'm not so sure how long I can do this, <laughs> at least the way I want to do it. I could do it the way I wanted to do it for, for forever, but it didn't look like I was going to be allowed to do it my way. But at the same time, it does seem... Like, you probably make a decent amount of money, and I, I don't know how much that is, but you did state that you don't necessarily need all the money that you're making. So my first suggestion would be to really consider saying, okay, in your mind, okay, I'm going to give this a shot, but I'm not going to give it a shot for six months or a year. And then take that time to plan exactly what the strategy is while you still have that job. Let me tell you, the day, here's the day I actually quit my job. This was it right here, February 17, 2021. But I knew I was gonna quit my job long before that. I knew when I was gonna quit my job. And so just the simple fact that I had decided in my head, I'm going to quit my job on this date right there, made my time at work so much more enjoyable because i mean this sounds awful because i didn't care what anybody told me it didn't make a difference i was still doing a good job i was still doing what i was supposed to do i was doing far more than i was supposed to but i was doing it on my terms so maybe just maybe if you it sounds like you're decided you're either gonna it doesn't sound like you're gonna stick with this job regardless so if that's the case and you, you want to go into this full time, I would say set that date, but keep that job. Because if you are truly living off of money that you don't, you don't need all of it, I would use the next six months or a year to absolutely put as much away as possible and give yourself a nice buffer. Because I can tell you right now, more than likely, you're not going to get that income to raise a tremendous amount immediately so another jersey but this is a totally different type of jersey it's a carson wentz eagles jersey youth 12 14. got them for free though they sold for 15 dollars 40 cents plus shipping and it went to caddyshack finds they said can you give me a shout out so i looked you up and there's your youtube channel it's going to your grandson thank you you said a couple things in your message that i think are awesome and i think you can already check a couple boxes and then there's a couple things that concern me me a little that would concern me a little bit and one is is your family on board 
And that is an absolute must. And you said that your wife certainly is. My wife was 100% on board. I mean, y'all, I was gone. All, I, I taught full-time. I was the head of the National Honor Society. I was the ba head baseball coach. I drove the bus. My boy went to another school. I started coaching over there. I would get home sometimes while I started YouTube. This is all going on while I did YouTube at the very beginning. And after a game and, you know, getting a bus back, getting home, I'd get back and go to bed at like one o'clock in the morning. I mean, we would travel and have to drive that thing and games wouldn't end. I mean, there are times our games wouldn't end till 1130 at night. It was crazy. And then drive back and it was just nuts. And I'd have to wake up at 545 the next morning and get back to school and do it all over again sometimes. It was tough. So my wife could just see it on my face, Pepper. And she's like, yeah, we got to do something different. Forget the money. Who cares? Something's got to give. Sometimes just normal hats that are a different color. So pretty decent. This is a 47 brand, I think. I'm not sure, actually. No, it doesn't look like it is. But it's pink Red Sox hat. Nothing special. So for $16 plus shipping. Now I'm going to make a couple assumptions and that your wife doesn't work outside the home. You said you could make it a family affair kind of thing, which means she doesn't have benefits is what I'm thinking of, which is probably why you mentioned your benefits. Benefits are certainly a big deal. For me, it wasn't as big as people might think. So there's two things I want to say about that. One is, how easily could you replace your job? Could you go back to that same employer in six months or a year and just say, hey, I want my job back? And would they say yes? That is a massive factor. Or how easy would it be for you to get another job that has the same type of income. If, if it's sales, it's probably pretty likely. And for me, that was a huge deal for me. There's I could walk it back into the school today and say, hey, I'd like a job. And they'd give it to me. You know, any school around here, they would give it to me. Nobody's knocking down the door. So for me, it wasn't a huge risk at all. And there was other factors like the social media having success. That was the thing that put us over the top for sure, because I'm not putting my family, I love my family, I want to have time with my family, but I want to make sure my family's taken care of, and if I got to work my butt off to do it, I'm going to do it even if I don't like it. But the case, I could just see that social media was doing well, and people, for whatever reason, like to enjoy, you know, watching my family, watching me, and I thought, huh, shoot, we might as well give this a shot, I'd regret it if I didn't, and I get to do reselling that I love, Every day, I'm like, this is too good to be true. But the reality of it is, could you get a job that has adequate income and benefits if this doesn't work out? Because that gives you incredible peace of mind. For me, the insurance part of it wasn't that big of a deal. You know, I say this, but people don't believe it. I was The most I ever made as a pub public high school teacher was $42,000 a year. And I paid for my family's insurance. They only covered me. I paid $590 a month for their insurance and all they did was cover me and I still almost paid $600 a month. I sold some Dick Tracy. What's her name, y'all? I cannot remember her name. Let me look at it. Breathless Mahoney. That's right. That's who Madonna played. Warren Beatty and Madonna. These are applause PVC figures. And they sold for $12.95 plus shipping. I'm going to go grab them from... Well, let me... Yeah, I'll do it in a minute. Let me read the message. Went to Shane. Thank you again for an awesome item. I am the same age as you and grew up with all those great 80s shows and movies. I loved Dick Tracy. I will add it to my 80s toy collection. He says he loves all the content and just keep being you. Thanks again, Shane. eBay store, The Pickled Picker. Well, I appreciate that and I love those too. And I bought a bunch of them. I took them out of the bin they're in because I'm going to put them in a different bin so I don't have to dig them out every time. But I just want to show you I bought a ton of them. And I'm selling them on all platforms. I even put some over on Dibdit because I got a bunch. And I don't know how long it'll take to sell them. So I figured I'd put them over there because you can get $10. Off. Well, no, you can't. You can get $5 off after Christmas if you use that link and then use code COMMONWEALTH when you check out. I figured I could sell a few more over there because, man, without viewers, y'all, this might take five years to sell. So just being honest. <laughs> Those $12.95 plus shipping, and they are pretty darn cool. They're in great condition, too. And I've got two, one full set and one partial set with all the other characters in them. So one thing I can't comment on is what your medical needs are, how old you are, what your risks are. All that. I mean, I have no idea, and I can't give any advice in those regards. But I can say for me, 
it, insurance was not a factor for me because I could self-insure and pay, you know, even if it's $200 more than what I was paying or $300, that wasn't going to be enough to change my mind. And my salary, like I said, was so little that I knew I could make it up. I knew I could make it up on social media, forget about reselling. And I, in reality, I knew I could make it up in reselling as well. And, you know, it wasn't that hard, but I was already making as much teach as much reselling as I was teaching already and I didn't have hardly any time to do it so you know my son think about this this is what another thing that gets me a little bit because I didn't make that much money my son is 20 has graduated college and is making 20,000 more dollars a year than I ever made as a high school history teacher so for me it's like whew, now I wouldn't Go back to teaching to be honest with you i just there's so much money to be made doing i mean shoot i could deliver pizzas and almost make that and still could do the reselling sold another one of those cannabis i put the money ones in here too this is a cross system sale i think these are going for 19. i think no these are the good ones these are going for 25 plus shipping one of the big factors that even though insurance wasn't was retirement one thing you do get as a high school te as a public school teacher is you do get a state retirement and for me you had to get 30 years in order to get full retirement but at 20 years and I had taught 21 I had partial and it was very very limited like I think I'm going to make like $300 a month whenever I turn however old I'm supposed to turn so it wasn't a lot but that was a big factor for me because I didn't have a ton of money saved up I didn't fully fund Roth IRAs and all that stuff. So I knew that there had to be not just enough money to replace the income, but to replace the future retirement that I wasn't going to get. And I think that may be the case in a lot of folks, and they don't really take that into account. And so not only did I have to replace that income, I had to go far beyond it in order to be comfortable that, you know, in my older years, my wife and I, and, and you know, I doubt our kids will be living with us at that point, but we'd have enough money. And so I think that that has to play into this as well. I want to thank a minute to thank Bruce. Bruce got, well, I'll bring the whole ashtray out here. Even though the ashtray didn't sell, I just put it in here. One of our charity 5050 St. Jude auctions with one of Reagan's ornaments, an Inaman ornament, and all of our stickers in there. So thank you for your contribution. I think $22.50 has already been donated to St. Jude for that. I'd also say keep in mind this, especially if your wife doesn't work outside the home either, is that Social Security money only comes based on how much money you're earning during your earning years and all that gets calculated in as well. And most people who do what we do try to show as little income as possible legitimately. I'm not saying cheat on your taxes. But if you do that, then less money towards your Social Security, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a factor as well. My wife hasn't worked outside the home in some years. She used to, but she doesn't anymore. And of course, I'm not earning outside the house, but I am paying myself. And that's a huge thing here. You know, figure out your budget, figure out what it is exactly you need to survive and pay yourself. Separate account, business account, pay yourself and live within that budget so that that excess money just doesn't get spent. It gets reinvested. It gets sent into retirement. It gets paid towards your insurance, you know, and you have money to keep this business going because you can't pay yourself all the money because you got a source. And that was my biggest concern in this. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Sold a Bible. It is not a very expensive Bible, but I only paid a dollar for it. So I'll take it. It's a Zondervan teen study bible these are awesome by the way can't wait for you to see those in the video and it's not even in great shape it has somebody's name on it and it's not perfect but it's still sold and it's in okay condition eleven dollars plus shipping and that one went to shane now on the last video we had a few viewer sales this one is the most viewer sales we've had in maybe since last christmas i mean it's been that long there's been a ton of you so thank you for that and he says thanks again love watching and seeing the whole family included Shane thank you Shane so here's the one thing that I read through that and just made an assumption that I think is a bit of a concern and maybe I'm wrong you said if I could source more in the good sourcing months which immediately told me because that's like me that you source predominantly from yard sales garage sales because 
If you don't, then there's not really good sourcing months, right? If you're sourcing from other places. So I've said this many times and I will say it again. If it wasn't for social media and I wanted to become a full-time reseller, the number one priority would be a consistent cheap sourcing route. Multiple consistent cheap sourcing routes. I would not quit my job and say, oh, I'm only sourcing at garage sales or I'm only th thrifting at the Goodwill. Stuff changes, y'all, and it changes quickly. So having multiple sourcing opportunities and having them secured, having them be consistent is the most of the full-time resellers I know who don't do social media, and I know a lot of them, they all have sourcing techniques, methods, and connections that are what is their mainstay. And I don't know very many who just thrift. Now, there are some, there are some for sure, but I don't know very many who just do that or just go to garage sales. Most of them have, I don't want to say hidden, but they have different sources that, that, that really bring them the merchandise that they sell consistently. And I think that is the number one thing I would do if I was in your case, is I wouldn't quit until I had those connections, multiple ones, and multiple systems in order to bring sourcing. If you're depending on the good sourcing months, I mean, hey, I've seen even years in the past decade where this is a great garage sale year and this one was not so good. So there's a little bit of a concern for me. It would be for me anyways, in your shoes. Sometimes I don't even know how things get in here. My wife gets them, I guess, and sells them, which is awesome. Fabletics. I don't know if she bought these at Goodwill or if she bought them for herself or somebody or my daughter. I don't know, but they sold. I don't know how much they sold for. $14. $14 plus shipping. You know, I know there's a lot of folks who do this who do it and they do it together with another side hustle. I know my buddy Mike, Golden State Picker, used to be ride sell reseller. And it's because he would do ride sharing and reselling until that ramped up and took off. And then he gave up the ride, ride share stuff. So, you know, there's definitely options out there if you're a little bit apprehensive. My guess is you're apprehensive because you're giving away a pretty massive paycheck. And that's something to think about for sure. So this guy off, I absolutely love selling old computer things, even though I know nothing about them. Commodore, I think we had this one, 1541. And that sold for $40 plus shipping. That one went to this guy right here, Justin D. Morgan. And he left a message. He said, recently found and subscribed to your YouTube channel, the C64. I'm wondering if that's the picker channel or this channel. Because I've, well, no, I lost this footage. You didn't see me pick this one up. That was a crazy good deal. All those Commodores I sold, three of them, plus these floppy drives. Poof, man, we made some money on those. And Because those were going for like 130 or 140, and there's three of them. I think I paid hmm, 60 for everything. It was a really good buy. We'll probably make five to six hundred dollars off of those five items. The C64 drive will be making an appearance on my YouTube channel, Justin D. Morgan, probably in January. Merry Christmas. Well, Justin, thank you. And if y'all want to see that, you can go check him out over there. All right, y'all, I got Turner in here, and I don't oh, think we're going to... that's gonna... cool. <laughs> Do you like that? I thought I brought you in there to see if you like it. Look at what somebody sent us. How awesome is that? Quilted pillow. And I know who sent this because it's a quilt. And she left the sweetest message, Turner. Check this out. And this is, look at this. Run with, run with it quilts. Quilted tees and such. And she is absolutely awesome. And I can't remember how to have people contact you. So you have to le let us know down in the comments below. And I can't read this whole message here, but it was super, super duper sweet. And that is her father's who has passed away from his truck. And we'll find a spot for that. And she, look at this, Turner. She said, and I just can't help. She says in the Trash to Cash podcast, we mentioned this and the inappropriate packing material. She said, Priority Mail Express. You know what that says? Cremated remains. <laughs> it means that it's somebody's body that they have made into ashes. 
and that's the bubble wrap that goes with it so we really do appreciate that see that wow <laughs> and cheryl you're awesome i cannot wait to show my wife this she is absolutely gonna love it we appreciate you very much all right reagan you've got one sale today out of come what is it jill got a we get things moving sticker that's the one you got thank you jill we appreciate it Bye, and don't forget to get your sticker at commonwealthpicker.com. Last little bit of a couple of thoughts here. One is you got to really know yourself and know your personality. One thing I knew about myself was that there is no way I was going to let it fail. There is no way. I would wake up in the morning. I would work all night. It was going to work, and if it didn't work somehow, I'd figure out a different way to make it work. And are you disciplined? Are you somebody who doesn't have to be motivated by somebody else? You know, this, I know a lot of personality types that just can't pull this off like a lot of you can out there. And you have to be disciplined. And if that's your personality type, then you could probably make it work. And the last thing is, what do you need to be content? You know, what are the things that you have to have? I personally, shoot. I lived off of nothing forever, and I still didn't take out loans for, a, I never, I still have never owned a new car in my life. I don't buy cars with credit. I never have, and I never made any money. I don't mind driving around, you know, the, the two cars I have right now we both bought, they have 100,000 miles on them. Before we bought them, they did. And it's just a matter of what do you need to live. And for us, it was worth what you mentioned in there. It was worth taking that chance. Now, subsequently, we've been blessed beyond our wildest dreams because of the success of all the social media. But even without it, I don't think I would go back to a normal job. I've loved the freedom so much. And you talked about being in bondage. And one way that you feel in bondage is you're in debt. And a lot of folks are out there doing this to get out of debt just because of the psychological effect. And, you know, I saw people in my life, not me, I saw people in my life struggle massively with debt and it was crippling to them. And so we just made a commitment, no matter what, we're not going to live beyond our means and we never have and it's paid off. And I think that's a, a big factor in it. And I know I'm missing some stuff and probably a lot of people will be mad at me in the comments and that's okay. Just trying to share a little of my experience and I feel for this gentleman because he truly does want to put the things that are important at the top of the list, he just wants to find a way to do it. So we wish you the best of luck no matter what you do. I know I'll support you and keep us updated. And I hope you guys out there are having a wonderful holiday season on into the new year. And I can't wait to see you next time.